Welcome to the next part in my IoT series. Today, we're gonna to look at smart plugs. And there's pretty much only a couple of options that make sense. The first is the Sonoff S31. It's completely wireless. It's based on an ESP3266. This is the other thing that we have for comparison. It's an AC-DC control relay. Uh, this is from digitalloggersiotrelay.com. This is the Adafruit version. And believe it or not, this is more expensive than this. This is a completely DIY solution. This is everything that you need, except you're gonna have to reflash the microcontroller. That's right, we're hacking devices. More after the bump. All right, so I've got my Pinesel, and we're going to modify this with a USB header. So you can take these apart pretty easily. I've already got one of these that's, that's been taken apart. Uh, but before we get to that, I wanna talk a little bit about this. This is an IoT relay. This is what you need for something that cannot be wireless for security reasons. Um, we're gonna talk a little bit more about it, but the controller in these had a security vulnerability and you can fix it, but you have to reflash it, which means taking them apart and rotating them, that kind of thing. This is a, a much more elegant solution in my opinion. So, you know, we've got the, the power input here, standard, uh, you know, NEMA power thing, a nice mechanical switch, screw mounts for a board. I mean, this is what it's all about when we're talking about appliance control. We've got one outlet that's always on, one outlet that's normally on, and two that are normally off. And this is the digital input. This has a lot of isolation circuitry. The reason for the bulk here is because if you're running, say, a low voltage wire, like some of the wire that we looked at, you know, for the home alarm system installation options, this is like the third video in a series. So if you haven't seen the other videos, you definitely should check that out. There's a lot of rationale. I've also written up a guide with my thoughts on the level one form. You can read that and sort of get up to speed. But this digital input, this is tolerant of just about anything. You can hook a Raspberry Pi Zero up to this and it will run no problem. It'll do whatever you need to do as far as control of this. Uh, you can also you know, put in 12 volts DC so this can be a relay from something else. It can be an AC input. This thing is super tolerant of just about anything for toggling these controls. So this is what you need if you need something that's hardwired. But this can also be controlled directly from the alarm panel. So if you have something that wants to happen, you know, from your home alarm panel and you've got the digital output on the home alarm panel, you could just wire it directly into this and it'll work. You don't even need a Raspberry Pi. You don't need anything. You need nothing, literally nothing. So the advantage of this is it's, it's hardwired and it's just a relay. So it's really hard to hack because there's not a lot there. This on the other hand, this is just, this is the kind of excess that I'm always lamenting about because it's an ESP8266 microcontroller. Let's take one apart and take a look. This is it, it's a Wi-Fi smart plug. Yeah, they've got an app you can download and just don't even bother with it. This thing can run a web server, a mosquito client, the whole nine yards. All right, so taking these apart, pretty easy. There's just two little clips on each side. Just be gentle with it and you won't break it. So once you get the, the end off, you just slide these and then there's three screws. If you get a bunch of these smart plugs, you gotta take every one of them apart and reflash them. There is actually a way to flash these over the air, um, but let's not go there. I mean, it's not guaranteed to work. You can read about that. There's some other guides. Maybe I should probably link to that. I couldn't get it to work on newer versions of this, but it worked fine on older versions, so your mileage may vary. All right, with the screws out, you just pop this, and this is all there is to it. I mean, it's fairly compact. And the shape means that you can plug both of these in on an outlet, no problem. And this is, it's a pretty dumb board. You've only got a few control pins here for the main PCB. This has power usage monitoring, so it will monitor the amount of current through the plug, which is awesome, really incredible, truly. Um, and also, you know, on-off control. And so that powers this ESP3266. Now the ESP3266, if you're familiar with it, it has a lot of really cool stuff built in. General purpose IO, sensors other than the sensor that's used for power monitoring. It has a UART, you can do I square, I to C. That's what I've been experimenting with. So many, many, many moons ago, I was doing this kind of stuff with I square. I've been talking about home automation for a while, but I've been thinking about like, how can I redo it in a way that's sort of friendly for the channel? And I was starting with solutions like the wired solution. This is a wireless solution. And really the thing that keeps me awake at night is the security aspect of this wireless solution. You see this ESP8266, it's a fairly competent microcontroller. And there've already been two pretty egregious security issues with it. One is if you were using 
e, uh, EAP authentication, which is more secure typically than WPA2, it was possible to inject arbitrary code. It was also possible to create a denial of service situation if these things were jo joining the wrong access point. Those things have been fixed and that's good, but that makes me worry about using these for five or 10 or 15 or 20 years. Like, is anybody gonna still be supporting this in that length of time? Whereas the relay control thing, it's so simple that like, if the alarm panel changes or if something better comes along than a Raspberry Pi, it's pretty easy and pretty surgical to rip out that you know, smart component and replace it with a different smart component and you have those control lines, the relay control lines. Here, the separation is this solder point right on the printed circuit board, right there. That's just this connection to control the relay and read some information about how much current is passing through this thing so that you get some power usage. There is a single button here on the end which can be useful for putting this thing in flash mode, but I've written a full guide on the level one forum about what you need to do. It's pretty easy. We've got the pine sole soldering iron. We're just gonna solder on a connector here to be able to use FTDI connectors. And that's where I ran into a problem. See, I was gonna show you how to basically disable the Wi-Fi interface on the ESP3266 uh, and network them together using iSquare. You can use an iSquare bus like with the alarm wire for the alarm system and connect these you know, all over your house in a hardwired configuration. That is much, much more secure. The problem with that is an electrical engineering problem. You see, when this thing is, is assembled, it's pretty safe. Like, in this state, no matter what you've done firmware-wise or control or whatever, it's really, really safe. If you solder even a connector on here, like I was gonna uh, show you how to put some pogo pins here, so there's always a connector here at the side. But as I was experimenting with that and looking at the safety of this circuit and measuring potentials from the ground interface on this plug, I discovered it wasn't actually safe. So this thing is designed to basically be isolated. It's, it is really difficult to um, work with this in such a way that you would have a fail safe, meaning that it will fail in a safe way, um, configuration of this smart plug with a wire coming out of it. So if you had this in an I swear bus and it overheated or failed spectacularly or one of the capacitors turned to a short or some other, you know, random failure mode that I'm able to think of, then potentially it's a dangerous situation because you have, you know, 110 volts, line volts traveling down your, your I square bus. Our other plug, if you take it apart and look at it, it's got optical, well, it's got isolators, electrical isolators to isolate those inputs from the rest of the system. So even if it fails with, you know, a ball of molten lead on it that somehow doesn't trip a breaker, it's gonna fail in a really safe way. So I thought I would point that out as like pros and cons. If you're like me, you're tempted to hardwire it in, but for most things like light control and stuff like that, I probably don't need that level of security. So I've sort of satisfied myself that even though these are wireless, because of the firmware upgradability, I'm gonna commit to it You know, for now, basically. We're gonna run this um, in a wireless configuration. These devices end up being on their own VLAN, on their own separate wired network, and the security aspect of it isn't really a big deal. You've also got the option, like, I've got these little HP grabber things, and they're pretty awesome. So you could use this. I mean, it does work. Um, I've just got some connections here. You just gotta make sure that they're on these plugs really well, because the, the little connections wanna kinda let go a little bit. But you can use these uh, as an adapter, and then you don't have to do any soldering at all. You can just clamp these on the edge of the printed circuit board inside the plug adapter, and you're good to go. So we'll talk more about setting that up in other videos. For this video, let's get straight to reflashing that because that's a whole other series of steps. Remember to hold the button down as you plug it in. Plug it in, let go of the button. Once you've got it soldered, um, you need to download ESP tool and run that. That's a Python program, so you need a functional Python 3 environment. So not much to do with that. You really just need to apt install Python 3 and Python 3 hyphen pip. And then you have to pip install PySerial, the serial library for Python, if you don't already have that on your system. And then you can just run Python ESP tool and get some diagnostic information from this. So, you know, it's a 26 megahertz crystal, an ESP 8266EX. There's some info on that guide on the level one forum. So you can check out the guide and follow along with the guide as we're kind of doing it in the video. We're gonna run Tasmoda. So there's some options here, which is pretty cool. 
One, you can set the options for, for your ESP8266 in firmware. Hard code, your SSID, your uh, decryption key for your SSID, what kind of authentication you want to use, other parameters about your network, your server that this is going to connect to, your local server, because it's not cloud-based. The whole reason we're doing this is to avoid the cloud. Once you get it flashed, you can power cycle your, your USB, and then you should see a new Wi-Fi network, Tasmoda something or other. Uh, once you've got it flashed and all that other kind of stuff. You can connect to that with your smartphone or your laptop or whatever and configure the wireless network this is supposed to connect to. Whenever you hard reset one of these devices by holding the power button down for a long time after it's been on, uh, it, that's what it does. It just sort of becomes its own access point. So you'll want to secure that and configure it as appropriate. But once you can see that it's behaving properly, you can desolder your connection and then reassemble your smart plug and then move on to the next smart plug. Once you get pretty quick with this, you can take it apart and flash it in about six minutes, five, six minutes, something like that. So even if you've got a lot of smart plugs, um, you can do a lot with it. Now, we've got a lot more to talk about in terms of home assistant and actually tying these in with automation. You know, the thing that I showed you in the beginning was motion from the alarm panel triggering under cabinet lighting. And so it's like, wait a minute, all this stuff has to be strung together. But it's surprisingly robust. I mean, the alarm panel is completely functional standalone. It's just that the alarm panel and the alarm panel sensors, including alarm motion sensors, even when the alarm is not armed, those are still generating events in the background. It's just that we have something to monitor that, home assistant. And because home assistant is monitoring those events in those zones, it knows when there's motion in the kitchen and it knows the time of day and it knows some other parameters. So it's pretty easy to trigger that under cabinet lighting, which is connected to one of these. And in terms of security, it's like, oh, someone has control of my under cabinet lighting. Not really a big deal. Most of the security is gonna be physical security. Somebody you know, around my house with a laptop, as opposed to internet security, since the network is isolated. So that's the, that's the level of risk that I'm willing to live with, but your mileage may vary. So I'm Wendell, this has been a quick look, hopefully, at modifying the S31 smart plug reflashing it as prelude to integrating it into your smart home and all that. Be sure to check out our other smart home videos. There's a whole series along with the guide and level one forms, but there's an overarching guide. I did some videos in the beginning just talking about the Iron Fireman and some really exciting stuff. So I'm Wendell, this is level one. I'm signing out and you can find me in the level one forums. I'll see you there.